Sunday School again. We're going to sing some songs and I hope you get on your feet and you would join us and have a lot of fun singing with us today. And uh, pay attention to the words so that you can learn these songs and practice them throughout the week. Okay, we're going to sing a new song called I Am The Door. Some of you may know it, some of you may not, but we're going to sing it together and we're going to sing it through a couple of times and hopefully you'll be able to catch on to it pretty quickly and, and learn a new song. Ready? I am the door, I am the door, by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, he shall be saved, he shall be saved. Okay, we're going to do that again. Ready? I am the door, I am the door, by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, he shall be saved, he shall be saved. Okay, we're going to sing with Christ in my vessel. I hope you remember this one. Ready? With Christ in my vessel, I can smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. With Christ in my vessel, I can smile at the storm. Until he takes me home. Sailing, sailing home. Sailing. Okay, this song, I think we've sung a long time ago, but we're going to refresh the old song and sing it for you again, and hopefully it'll refresh your memory or you get to learn a new one again. This one's called One Door and Only One. All right, ready? One door and only one, and yet its sides are two. Inside and outside, on which side are you? One door and only one, and yet its sides are two. I'm on the inside, on which side are you? Ready? Let's do that one again. Ready? One door and only one, and yet its sides are two. Inside and outside, on which side are you? One door and only one, and yet its sides are two. I'm on the inside, on which side are you? Okay, we're going to sing about being happy. Um, on Sunday, I am happy. All right, I don't know if you know this one, but I hope you listen up and you sing it all week long. Ready? On Sunday I am happy, a Monday full of joy. On Tuesday I have peace within that nothing can destroy. On Wednesday and on Thursday I'm walking in the light. Oh, Friday is a heaven below and Saturday's always bright. Oh, glory, 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 oh, glory to the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah, I am saved and I'm so glad I am. Oh, glory, 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 oh, glory to the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah, I am saved and bound for the happy land. Hello, boys and girls. It's good to see you again today. Thank you for joining us for Sunday School. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity to meet around your word again. I pray that you would speak through me and bless the children as they listen. I pray that you'd open their understanding that they might know you better and be more like you. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I brought a special guest with me today. I was outside this morning looking at my rose bushes and I looked down at the branch on my rose bush and guess who I saw? I bet you'll never guess. There lying on the branch was my friend Squirmy Worm. So I asked Squirmy Worm if he would like to come and join us today at Sunday School, but he said that um, he was kind of busy. And then he said, all right, yes, I'll come. Oh, hi, Squirmy Worm. I'd like you to meet my class. Squirmy Worm, this is my class. Class, this is Squirmy Worm. Uh, what do you have in your mouth? Oh, tomato seeds. Yes? Wow, what beautiful tomato seeds. Did you pick these out all by yourself, Squirmy? Oh, it says gorgeous colors. Fine flavor, solid flesh, bumper crop, and they produce all summer long. Woo, that's a pretty good looking plant there, Squirmy. 
Squirmy, would you like us to help you plant these seeds? Great. We look forward to planting some seeds with Squirmy today. Oh, what do we have here? We have some food for the plants. Oh, and a watering can to be able to put the water in it. Oh, and a pot. A pot with some soil in it. Very good. Oh, and a, and a shovel too, just in case we need a shovel. Oh, very good. Well, I think we have everything we need. You know, Squirmy, it takes a lot of work to grow tomatoes. You must really love tomatoes. Yes, I do. I love tomatoes. They're my favorite food. Well, I can see that you took the time to pick out just the right seeds and you planned exactly how you were going to plant them. You have great plans for these seeds, don't you, Squirmy? Yes, I do. Well, that's great. Did you know that God has great plans for you? Did you know that God is compared to a gardener in the Bible? And God planned to make you who you were before you were even born. He knew what he wanted you to look like. He knew what you wanted, he wanted you to be before you were ever even born. That's amazing, isn't it? God wants you to be joyful. He wants you to be healthy and to be, <coughs> to grow to be like his son, Jesus Christ. That is his biggest plan for you. And you know why? Because he loves you. He loves each child. He loves Squirmy Worm, all his creation. Um, <clears throat> now, let's see. We're going to plant these tomato seeds here. Uh, first step is we get the dirt in the pot, and it's already there. So first step is done. That's great. Next step is... We're going to make a little hole down here, Squirmy, where we can drop that tomato seed right down in there. And let's see, wipe off some of that dirt there. And, hmm, look at these tomatoes. Let's see what kind of seeds we have in here, what they look like. You know, tomatoes, they grow lots on the bush. Oh, did you see that? That is one tiny little seed. Look how tiny that is. And yet that tiny seed had produced a lot of fruit. Do you see that, Squirmy? We're going to drop that right down in there. We might put one more down in there. Oh, so tiny. I'm going to pick that up and drop that right down inside there. And then maybe we'll use this little shovel so we don't get our fingers all muddy again. And put that down. Cover the dirt over again. And what's the next step that we might need to do? Some of this plant food already in the watering jug for us and we're gonna pour that water right down on our plant oh there it goes and now we have to just wait and look after our plant that is pretty cool isn't it let's see um so we want this plant to grow nice and strong and healthy but um can we make it no, but we can just help it do it, right? We can just help it. Did you know that God helps the plants to grow? He provides all that beautiful sunshine they need. Did you know that God wants us to produce fruit in our life? He wants us to grow spiritual fruit. Now, Squirmy, if I were to start, if I was to pray one day and then an apple popped out on my head, would that be some spiritual fruit? Or maybe I was... Um, talking to somebody about Jesus and suddenly an orange popped out on my shoulder. Wouldn't that be a little bit... Do you think that's the kind of spiritual fruit that God's talking about? No. No, that's a little bit too weird. That's not what happens when God's talking about spiritual fruit. We don't grow spiritual fruit. It's not fruit that you can eat. Uh, spiritual fruit is how we act. And God wants us to be more like Jesus every day. He wants us to be kind and gentle and faithful and loving. And the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, what these spiritual fruits are. It says here, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. 
and it also says, against such there is no law. Now, I am pretty sure your mom and dad are going to never tell you to stop being good or stop being gentle or stop being faithful. Those are things that God wants in our lives that there are no laws or rules that somebody says against you can't do those. These are things that God says everybody loves to see these in your life. So, what do plants need in order to produce their fruit? Well, these plants need lots and lots of love and care. Oh, well you know they certainly do. They need their soil, they need their fertilizer, they need water, and they need lots of sunlight to produce their fruit. Now, squirmy worm, what do you think we need to produce spiritual fruit? Well, I think maybe we need to read God's Word. Well, that's a very good one. That's a start. God gave us His Word, He gave us Jesus, and He gave us the Holy Spirit. And all three of those help us to produce spiritual fruit in our life. Now, God gave us His words to read. And, his, and hide it in our hearts so we'll be more like Him. Now, when we read God's Word, how do we hide it in our hearts, Squirmy Worm? Do you think we take like little strips of paper and we write a verse on it and then we try to tuck it in our skin? You think that's going to get to our hearts? No. No. Do the, when you memorize the Bible, Squirmy, like the kids are doing on Wednesday night and they have their Bible verses to memorize, when you memorize the Bible and then you sit around and you think about it. Well, you don't have to just sit around. Sometimes you might be riding your bike or your scooter or maybe you're just coloring a picture or cleaning up your room and you think about the verses that you're memorizing. And you know that those verses, like the water that spills on top of the dirt, and it doesn't just sit on top of the dirt. It soaks right down into the dirt where the roots of the plant can get to it. And now those words, those verses will start to trickle right down in your heart and it'll change who you are as you think about God's Word and as you memorize it. And that's how you hide it in your heart. You memorize it and you think about it and then you obey it when God tells you what to do. Now, the next thing about God's, uh, about how we grow for spiritual fruit was Jesus. God gave us Jesus. And Jesus is like the sunshine. Did you know that when Jesus died on the cross, he, came, he paid our debt of sin. He paid for our way to go to heaven. And when we accept that payment that Jesus made for us, it's like the sun shining in our heart. And Jesus clears away that sin and darkness that's in there. And our hearts can be full of light. And he takes it all away from us. And we can have light and grow spiritual fruit in our life. And then next, God sent us this, the Holy Spirit. Now, can we see the Holy Spirit? No. But the Holy Spirit is like the wind. And when we see the trees swaying and moving and the grass rustling as, as, as it just goes by, we can see the effects of it. And the Holy Spirit is like that, that prompting you have inside of you. Something that little, something that tells you, hey, you should be kind to this person and you should help them out. Or you should say a nice word to them. Or it the, also will tell you, no, 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 you should not be doing that. You know that's not right. You should not be doing that. That is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And so all three of those work together to produce what's called spiritual fruit in our hearts, in our lives. And I am sure that your moms and dads will be so glad to see more spiritual fruit growing in your heart as well as the Lord. He'd be so happy to see more spiritual fruit growing inside of you. We have a, fruit, uh, a verse here, John 15 verse 12, and it says, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. This was Jesus loved us and he gave us a commandment a commandment that says we should love one another and the first fruit of the spirit is love that's right the first fruit of the spirit we have is love that god wants us to show why because he loved us 
and he died for us. And you know, we can show others love, the love of Jesus through us by telling them about him and telling them that he died for him, for them. And you can also show love for others by your care and concern and your help and being uh, love to your family and love to your friends. You can show them and show them that Jesus loves them through you. All right, that was the first spiritual fruit that God talked about this week. Squirmy, I'm so excited about your tomato plants. Uh, we look forward to you enjoying this beautiful tomato plant for all the summertime, and I hope that you get lots of yummy tomatoes off of it. Okay, boys and girls, let's pray, and let's ask God to bless uh, the lesson that you've learned. Thank you, Lord, for your word, and we sure do appreciate our time in Sunday school today, and we pray that uh, you will help us this week to demonstrate your love through us to our families, to our friends, to the people around us, and I pray that you'll help each one of us to grow to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. We love you, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome back to our memory verse for the week. Today we're just going to get straight into our verse. Wait, wait, wait! Oh, hello, Emma. You shocked me. Where did you pop up from? Sorry, I was just running a bit late. Oh, that's okay, Emma. Are you ready to help us with our verse today? Uh, I guess, but I want to tell you a joke. Oh, okay. I'm sure the boys and girls would love to hear a joke. Go ahead, Emma. So, why did the kid throw his clock out the window? Why did the kid throw his clock out the window? I don't know, Emma. Why did he? Because he wanted to see time fly. <laughs> That's a good one, Emma. Good job. Okay, are you ready to get into the memory verse? No, now? no, no. I have one more joke. Oh, okay. Would you like to hear another joke, boys and girls? Okay, we'll hear one more, Emma. Okay. What has four wheels and flies? What has four wheels and flies? Do you know, boys and girls? I don't know, Emma. What does? You'll never believe it. A garbage truck. <laughs> a garbage truck. That's a good joke, Emma. Thank you so much for bringing some comedy into our memory verse of the week. Now, are we ready to get into the memory verse of the week? Are you going to help us, Emma? Uh, yes. Oh, great. Okay, boys and girls, we'll get into our memory verse of the week. Today's memory verse is John 15, 12. I'll say the, I'll say the whole verse and then you can repeat it with Emma. Are you ready? Are yes. you steady? Okay, we'll go through it. John 15, 12. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Do you think you can handle that one, Emma? Yes. What about you, boys and girls? Okay, let's give it a try. Are you ready? John 15, 12. John 15, 12. This is my commandment. This is my commandment. That ye love one another. That ye love one another. As I, as I, have loved you. Have loved you. Good. Okay, we'll go through it a second time. John 15, 12. John 15, 12. This is my commandment. This is my commandment. That ye love one another. That ye love one another. As I, as I, have loved you. Have loved you. Good. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to go through it for the third time. Our final time. Are you ready? Yes. Are you steady? Yep. Let's go. John 15, 12. John 15, 12. This is my commandment. This is my commandment. That you love one another. That you love one another. As I, as I, have loved you. Have loved you. Good. Great job. 
thanks so much, Emma. That's okay. Okay, have you had a great time, Emma? Yes. We sure had a great time listening to your jokes today. Wait, since you love my comedy, would you like to hear one last joke to end this lesson? Oh, that would be great. Would you, boys and girls? Okay, Emma, go ahead. Tell us one more joke to end the lesson. Why do bees have sticky hair? Why do bees have sticky hair? I don't know, Emma. Why do bees have sticky hair? Because they use honeycombs. <laughs> because they use honeycombs. That's a great joke, Emma. Well, boys and girls, I hope you've had a fun time doing your memory verse this week. Now make sure you work hard on it during the week, okay? John 15, 12. We'll see you next time. Bye, boys and girls. Bye, have a great week.